Okay, so it is 4.32 a.m. on Tuesday, February 2nd here in Japan. Total fucking crackhead right now, but uh, here in Japan, they have outdoor vending machines where you can get uh, this coffee was like 50 cents. It's literally toxin. Like my chance of getting some sort of leukemia is probably increased like 0.001% just by having this. But that'll uh, agonize some adenosine receptors via the caffeine. And I can get through this question here because it's either don't do a question or just drink toxin and wing it. So that's what we're going to do now. Very extended fucking intro. Uh, but now I'm just going to get into this question. So we have a 75 year old woman with a long smoking history. The point of maximal impulse in the sub xiphoid space this is really high yield for COPD. See on the chest x ray here how the lungs are hyperinflated, right? So this is due to air trapping, the flattened diaphragm. This is a chest x ray classic for COPD, okay? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So big black lung fields, okay? Large lungs. And you see how the heart, the cardiac silhouette is uh, narrow and pushed to the median, the midline. You see that? Like if you were to get EG, a congestive heart failure question, you'd have a big uh, cardiac silhouette that's lateralized, right? Toward the patient's left or the right side of the image. But here the heart's pushed to the middle, the midline. And then, so that's the radiography or the radiograph, but uh, here in the vignette, it says point of maximal impulse in the sub xiphoid space. So your xiphoid sternum, okay, in the uh, the midline, and uh, this is reflective of COPD. That's what that point in the vignette means, okay? They can also just say um, a cardiac silhouette that's long and narrow. They can just say that without showing you the radiograph. And you need to know for your USMLE questions, that just means COPD. So we continue reading. A two on six holosystolic murmur auscultated along the left sternal border that is accentuated with inspiration. That's tricuspid regurge, okay? Uh, two on six holosystolic murmur is usually mitral regurge, but of course, right sided murmurs are accentuated with inspiration, not left sided murmurs. So if you inspire, diaphragm moves down, decreased intrathoracic pressure. Uh, increased pulmonary compliance of the small capillary beds, and you're going to enable increased venous return to the right atrium, and that's going to accentuate the right-sided murmurs. Most murmurs get worse with more volume in the heart, okay? So uh, that's a high-yield point if you're in MS1, your first year of med school in particular, just knowing that right-sided murmurs, inspiration will increase them, left-sided murmurs, expiration. So now we have pulmonic, uh, there's a loud pulmonic component of S2. That means there's a loud P2. This is very important for uh, pulmonary hypertension, okay? They can say that there's a loud P2. They can say loud pulmonic component of S2. S2, which is closure of your semilunar valves, so your aortic and your, and your pulmonic valves, uh, the S2 component is split into an A2 and a P2. So aortic, so A2 obviously the closure of your aortic valve, P2 closure of your pulmonic valve, and it's always A2 before P2. Okay, there's, this is called splitting, and uh, there's a lot to talk about regarding splitting. How you can have paradoxical splitting, widened splitting, etc. I don't want to go down that long discussion right now. I want to stay more concise for this question, but the point is, a loud P2 for USMLE means pulmonary hypertension because the valve, the pulmonic valve is gonna slam shut when you have increased distal pressure in your pulmonary vasculature, okay? You might say, but I don't get it. Why is there tricuspid regurge in this question? Like how does that relate to pulmonary hypertension? And this is a value point for you. It sounds really fucking weird. One of the most high yield presentations of tricuspid regurge is simply that of Pulmonary, hype, pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. So if you were to ask me, Michael, when would tricuspid regurge show up in a USMLE question? I would tell you things like uh, tricuspid valve endocarditis and IV drug user. I would tell you uh, carcinoid syndrome, right? And also where you can get tricuspid vegetations in carcinoid syndrome. And I would tell you uh, lung disease leading to pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonale. So you might say, what's core pulmonale? Core pulmonale is when we have right heart failure, secondary to uh, a lung problem, okay? 
COPD, cystic fibrosis. It could be due, it could be due to uh, pulmonary fibrosis, e.g. from Crest syndrome. So there's many etiologies of right heart failure due to a pulmonary cause. Uh, but in order to have core pulmonale, your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, which is equal to your left atrial pressure, must be normal because the most common cause of right heart failure is left heart failure. So you must not have left fit heart failure as any type of etiology uh, in order to diagnose, diagnose core pulmonale. So, uh, and of course, left heart failure plus right heart failure equals congestive heart failure, okay? Lots to talk about. So we look at the answers here. And we'll just go in order. Decrease left ventricular compliance for choice A. Clearly wrong, because uh, our diagnosis is going to be core pulmonale, okay? And the left vent, the left side of the heart is just not involved whatsoever. So we're just going to eliminate that, stay concise, and move on. Uh, choice B, decreased right ventricular compliance. So this is not any type of cause of the patient's presentation. Decreased right ventricular compliance could refer to stiffening of the right ventricle if we had some sort of amyloidosis or fibrosis, uh, but this is core pulmonale. This is lung disease, COPD, causing our right heart failure. And uh, once again, right ventricular com decreased right ventricular compliance in and of itself is not any type of uh, initial etiology. It's not the cause of our uh, pathology here. So we're just gonna we're just gonna keep reading. We look at choice C, diminution of alveolar capillary beds. It's like, oh, wow, let's use big vocab, okay? So diminution is just a decrease of, and alveolar capillary beds. This is our correct answer. Now, you might say, well, how the fuck does that make sense? Like, can you explain that? Okay, that's what I'm here for, right? So when we talk about COPD, it's the combination of chronic bronchitis and emphysema, and the emphysematous component, emphysema, is loss of your alveolar surface area, okay? It's loss of your alveolar septa. And within your alveolar septa, not only are you are you losing surface area for gas exchange, so you're gonna become a chronic CO2 retainer, but you're also, within, within those septa, you're losing capillary beds, okay? So if you're losing capillary beds, you think of the pulmonary vasculature as a parallel circuit where resistance within a circuit is decreased with the number of parallel components that we have, right? So the one over big R equals one over R1 plus one over R2, et cetera. So if we're losing alveolar capillary beds, the amount of blood that's going from the right ventricle through the pulmonary circulation must by definition encounter greater resistance overall. And if it's encountering greater resistance overall, that means we have increased afterload on the right ventricle and increased pulmonary pressure on that right ventricle, which is causing our right ventricular hypertrophy and our ultimately our right heart failure and our core pulmonale. So one of the mechanisms USMLE loves for core pulmonale is loss of alveolar capillary beds. Once again, you're losing components of your parallel circuit, increased resistance, increased afterload on the right ventricle, right ventricular failure, and uh, COPD is our ideology, therefore core pulmonale. Um, you can also, for instance, in cystic fibrosis, uh, pure chronic bronchitis, if you've got uh, hypoxic vasoconstriction. Now, as I just said, COPD is a combination of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. But this answer, choice C, relates to the emphysematous component and is correct. But if we were to talk about dually, uh, simultaneously, the chronic bronchitis component, where we talk about blue bloater, right, hypoxia, there's lots of mucus production and we have severe hypoxic vasoconstriction, which is going to cause a pressure backup to the right ventricle, right? So that's another mechanism, hypoxic vasoconstriction. They like as one of, uh, separately as a question, a uh, degree of hypoxia as uh, a prognostic uh, indicator or a, uh, an element of prognosis with respect to how, uh, how poorly your core pulmonale is going to progress. And that makes sense qualitatively, but also just if we have more hypoxia, we have more afterload on the right ventricle, right? There's more hypoxic vasoconstriction. So chronic bronchitis, hypoxic vasoconstriction, increased afterload on the right ventricle, emphysema, loss of alveolar septa, which means loss of alveolar capillary beds, fewer components of our parallel circuit, more resistance, more afterload on the right ventricle, 
right ventricular failure. Uh, we look at choice D, primary pulmonary hypertension. This is a genetic condition usually caused by mutations in BMPR2 receptor, okay? And it's usually going to be uh, young patients, young adults, like they'll give you a 28-year-old female who's a non-smoker, and they'll tell you that there's increased pulmonary vascular markings on chest x-ray. They might say there's a loud P2, just like this, loud pulmonic component of S2. They might say there's tricuspid regurge. But once again, it's not going to be a smoker with COPD. It's going to be a youngish adult, non-smoker, and it's sort of just going to be going to be an idiopathic uh, core pulmonale, okay? And that would be primary pulmonary hypertension. Choice E, pulmonic valvular incompetence secondary to lung disease. Uh, so this is just obviously a distractor. So um, we do not... Incompetence can refer to regurgitation. So not only do we not have uh, pulmonic regurge here, but it, yeah, it's just wrong overall, okay? So pulmonic regurge would be a holo diastolic murmur similar to aortic regurge, except because it's pulmonic, it's on the right side of the heart, it would increase with inspiration, right? So pulmonic regurge, I don't think I've ever seen this for any US simile question ever. Why the fuck we get tricuspid regurge, not pulmonic regurge in association with uh, core pulmonale, no fucking idea, okay? But it's just something I've seen repeatedly through questions. So look, we can make this a 45-minute discussion, uh, go through all the details. You say, Michael, yeah, but can you explain this better? I know. Like we can, as I said, more lengthy chat about this sort of thing. But now it's 4.45 a.m. So uh, I pushed through this as a crackhead. I hope this was a decent enough explanation, okay? Answers diminution of alveolar capillary beds. Patient has uh, core pulmonale secondary to COPD. And that's it.